Although I'm off today where I would normally go fishing, it's been, it's just been too windy uh, today, 20 to 25 knots, and it's been that way for about a five day stretch. Uh, so I've just been catching up on editing. By far the most asked question that I've got on YouTube is how to make a bait tube? How do you make your bait tube? Did you make that? Did you buy that? Well, uh, I made it uh, with just some simple parts. It's, it's extremely easy. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today, but I've gotta head across the island to, to Home Depot to go pick up the pieces. On the plumbing aisle at Home Depot, you'll get a two foot long, four inch piece of ABS pipe, which stands for acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, which has small air pockets in the sidewalls. If you buy the white PVC pipe, polyvinyl chloride, it will not float. Just keep that in mind. Uh, you've also got the option to buy a 10 foot length of the four inch diameter if you want to make several bait tubes. For the front, I used a atrium grate, in the back, a round grate. Another option is to use a knockout test cap, which is a little bit cheaper. You could drill holes in that. On the hardware aisle, I picked up a quarter inch by two and three eighths carabiner that's stainless. You also need a length of paracord, or you can choose another material that, that will float. That'll help you uh, prevent tangles with your rudder. The one thing I wasn't able to find at Home Depot was some bungee, bungee cord. I could have bought like single bungee straps, but uh, Hardware Hawaii has got um, quarter inch bungee, so I'm gonna run over there and pick some of that up. You'll need a drill and some drill bits to match the diameter of the paracord and the bungee cord. Paint is optional. You'll need a pair of scissors and a lighter. Uh, if we're gluing the pipe together, two-part primer and cement, and then the chisel that we used earlier. I've got the last bait tube that I made, and I'll just talk about some of the differences that I'm gonna make on this next one. Uh, one of the main ones is the end cap. This is just a piece of knockout. It's super thin, I ended up gluing it in there. The biggest change is this one ha has holes on the sides, um, which I thought would be needed to, to get the, the bait more oxygen. Uh, it turns out it's plenty through the front and back, and these little holes, all they do is cut up the bait. They'll get their nose, nose stuck there, tail stuck there, and then they're in there sideways, and then they can drown. So that's the primer, the purple stuff, and once that dries, I'll go ahead and put the cement on there. Okay, the next thing to do is to drill the holes for the bungee, which will hold the cap on. And I'm gonna drill these about two inches down from the upper lip of the tube. And then I'll try and drill the other hole directly across. The reason for drilling the holes that far down is to allow enough space for the cap 
So you gotta route the bungee cord through one of the holes, pull it through, we'll pull it back out, and we'll tie an overhand knot, which will hold this end in place in the tube. Now we're gonna route the, the bungee cord through the atrium cover, just straight across. Now we'll go through the through the other hole we drilled going in from the outside. Take the cap off to the side. Next step is to pull tension onto the bungee and then we'll tie another knot in there and that's what's gonna hold the cap in place. With the paracord and we're going to make uh, the part that will attach the the carabiner to off the lanyard so uh, we're going to do the same same method as the bungee put the cord in tie a knot and then put it over the top leaving some space to tie a knot here and then tying another knot back inside the tube You have to figure out how long to make the lanyard for your bait tube. Mine is eight feet long, or eight feet of lanyard, and then about six inches of bungee. Uh, you're gonna just have to figure out what works for your kayak. I've got a Rebo 13. For connecting the, the paracord to the bungee, I'll tie a double uni knot, or a uni knot to a uni knot. it together and then you just have to work the slack out of the knot. To tie the, this is a stainless steel carabiner. You can just tie a knot to your bait tube if you want, but I find that a, a clip is a lot eas more convenient. Um, so you can attach this however you want. I'll probably just do a, a uni knot. On my Revo, I attached it basically uh, back here, a beam the rear hatch, because I can reach all the way back here and grab this. Um, I did make this little trolley line, but I never actually used it. You could also route it through the grab handle up there. You could also route it through this eye right here. Um, you could also run it around your rod holder. Right, so I got my length of bungee. This is about two and a half feet long. On one end, where we'll attach it to the kayak, uh, I'm just gonna tie a loop onto here. So I'll tie an overhand knot in the line, not tightening it down. At the end of the line, I'm gonna tie a, just an overhand knot that you can tighten down. And then you're gonna go back through the overhand knot. And you can wait to do this until you, to actually, you actually mount it on the kayak. Otherwise you'll have to put this through wherever you're mounting it and then route the other end of the lanyard through here. So the, the part where the carabiner clips on to mine, it's got just enough slack to be able to go either way over the top of it. The small loop that I tied at the top there, <clears throat> that's just a place to attach the carabiner to. Chances are you're gonna have to just fiddle with the, the bungee at the top and tying the paracord to where you'll attach the carabiner to just to get it right. You don't want to leave you don't want to leave a ton of space in here because if there is enough space your rudder will get stuck down through the hole right here so that's why i make the make it so there's almost no room for the, the rudder to get stuck in there but enough room for the, to slide that off and pull the cap off some of you are probably wondering why i just don't buy the hobie live well which is a couple hundred dollars 
Um, the main reason is space on my kayak. Uh, I like to put my fish bag back here underneath the rod holders and it's five feet long so even when it's folded in half um, just with the ice before I open the bag up uh, it takes up the room where I put, would put the live well. Most guys have it running down through the scupper holes for the intake. There's not a ton of space on my kayak and I don't really mind dragging the bait tube. Usually I'm not going huge distances and if I am um, I can still do about two and a half knots pedaling with a bait tube. Um, obviously you can go a lot faster. I can do three and a half to four knots without the bait tube in the water. No matter what you're going to run into some serious tangle issues with the bait tube. Uh, primarily the line, the lanyard getting tangled around or against the rudder um, as you pull the bait tube forward if the lanyard is running from say the left side left rear of your kayak and it goes to the right side of the rudder as you pull it forward it's probably going to get hung up on the rudder you have to pedal a little bit or paddle um, and then just maneuver to get the bait tube out of there uh, in worst case scenario the bait tube gets wraps all the way around your rudder which could happen while you're fighting a fish say a tuna in no current or wind and it just drags you in a circle uh, so you just have to have some situational awareness there uh, i mentioned earlier if you get a floating rope that will help with some of the tangle issues with the rudder because the 550 cord sinks the bait tube lanyard will also get caught in your line sometimes so you have to pay attention to that it really sucks if your damashi gets tangled because then you're gonna have to break the hook off and leave the hook in there an option would be to make your lanyard slightly shorter to avoid some of the tangle issues with your line. Uh, the trade-off being that uh, if your bait tube is banging into the kayak, it's gonna scare all the fish away. So I found that eight feet is a good balance between getting tangled in my line and uh, it banging into the kayak. You'll, you'll probably find if you're new to kayak fishing, the first time you hook up with a live bait out is when you just stop doing everything. <laughs> because you're not making any noise, you're not screwing anything up. And I also wouldn't skip putting the bungee cord into the, the bait tube line, because as your kayak is going along and in the swell, it's gonna jerk that bait tube around a lot. And if you've got bait in there, especially opilu, which are pretty sensitive and can die easily, uh, that's gonna hurt them. You wanna do everything you can to keep your, your live bait as lively as possible, uh, which will be another video. Sometimes I will use two bait tubes if I'm really greedy with the bait, say if I catch a coolie, the goggle eyes, or andopilu, I'll try and split them up. Or uh, if I catch ballyhoo and pilu, I'll try and split them up as well. Uh, you don't want to put too many live baits in the bait tube at a time. And this depends on the size of the baits, but uh, with opilu, I found that five medium to large opilu, so say around eight or nine inches, can fit in the bait tube comfortably for several hours without them dying. Uh, and you kind of have to keep moving to keep water flowing through the tube, but for the most part, there's enough current to keep them lively enough. Uh, a coolie, the goggle eyes, they don't matter. You could shove 10 of them in there, not paddling at all, and they'd still be alive. If you're pulling two bait tubes, you're gonna go extremely slow. So if you're gonna do that, you better be prepared to, to fish wherever you're at or have a really slow, a really slow move to wherever you wanna fish, say somewhere around 1 to 1.5 knots. Anyhow, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them down below. I'll be happy to hear from you, and I'll catch you on the next video.